Hi guys, I'm back with part three for the November 2018 paper one, higher paper. All right, let's carry on with question 15. Three solid shapes A, B, C, they are all similar. The surface area of shape A is four. The surface area of shape B is 25. The ratio of the volume of shape B to the volume of shape C is 27 ratio 64. Work out the ratio of the height of shape A to the height of shape C. Now, first and foremost, I've got A to B. And they are looking at the scale factor of area. So the scale factor of area is 4 ratio 25, okay? Now the scale factor for the length is going to be different. Now area to length is like going from centimetre squared to centimetres. Area, length. If you're going from the scale factor of area to length, you need to square root. From centimetre squared to centimetres, you need to square root. So square root 4 to give you 2 and square root 25 to give you 5. So the scale factor length for A to B is 2 ratio 5. Now we're going to have a look at shape B to C. Now they've got the scale factor for the volume, which is 27 ratio 64. You need the scale factor for the length. OK, now you're, to go from volume to length, you're going from centimeter cubed to centimeters. Again, volume to length with scale factor, you need to cube root. Cube root of 27 is 3, cube root of 64 is 4. So the scale factor length from B to C is 3 ratio 4. Now you're going to write A to B to C because you want a scale factor. Or, uh, sorry, you want, the you want the ratio of A to B to C. You know A to B. Now, you've got length for both of them, so that's fine. Length for A to B is 2 to 5, and length for B to C is 3 to 4. Now, you want a ratio for all three. The one that's matching is B, so 5 multiplied by 3 is going to give me 15. This whole ratio is going to multiply by the same thing. The 5 multiplied by the 3, so so will the 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Now, the 3 multiplied by 5, so so will the 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So the ratio of A to B to C is 6 to 15 to 20. Sorry. However, the question has said, give the ratio of the height from shape A to C. So you're going to look at A, which is 6, and C, which is 20. So A to C is going to be 6 ratio 20. However, simplified, because it says simplest form, it's a reminder for us. Divide both sides by 2. I've got 3 ratio 10. So... In its most simplest form, 3 ratio 10. So a rundown of what I did. So look at the scale factor from area to length. If you're going from length to area, you square it. If you're going from length to volume, you cube it. If you're going from area to length, you square root. If you're going from volume to length, you cube root. What if you're going from area to volume? Then you square root to get the length and then you cube it to get the volume. Okay, so break it down in steps. Once you've got the length of A to B and the length of B to C, you do A to B to C, make them, match them together. Whatever this multiplies by, so will that. Whatever this multiplies by, that, so will that. Um, and just bear in mind, it's not A to B to C. It is A to C. Okay? Next question says, prove algebraically that two, 0.256 recurring can be written as 127 over 495. Okay. First and foremost, I'm going to make this... Um, recurring decimal equal to x so 0 0.256 equals to x now there are three values here so i'm going to work out a thousand x and i'm going to be left with 256 point and only the five and six are reoccurring so 0.56 now the first digit is not reoccurring so i'm going to work out 10x and i'm going to be left with 2.56 recurring okay so depending on your question you're going to work out 10x or 100x or 1x and you're going to take it away in such a way so that the reoccurrings cancel each other out. Okay, so if I've got 0.56 and 0.56, those can take away with each other. So 0.56 take away 0.56 cancel out. 1000x take away 10x is 990x. And 256 take away 2 is 254. To work out the value of x, I'm going to divide it by 200, uh, 990 on both sides. So x equals 254 over 990. I need to prove it's the same thing as 127 over 495. I will divide the top and bottom by 2 and I'm left with 127 over 495. Now, bear in mind, I made this decimal equal to x, and now x is equal to 127 over 495. Therefore, 0 0.56, uh, 0 0.2. 5, 6 recurring is equal to 1, 2, 7 over 4, 9, 5. And there's your proof. Okay? All right, guys. Let's move on. Okay, I like this question. Here is a sketch of a curve. The equation of the curve is y equals x squared plus a, b plus b, where a and b are integers. The points 0, minus 5, and 5, 0 lie on the curve. Find the coordinates of the turning point. First and foremost, 
if you're doing turning point, there is one step to do this and one method, which is completing the square. In order to complete the square, I need to know my quadratic equation and I haven't got a full quadratic equation here. So I'm going to try work it out. Now, this is an X value. This is a Y value. This is X value. This is a Y value. So when X is when x is 0, y is minus 5, and when y is 0, x is 5. So you can just plot down the graph if you like there. I'm going to substitute each of these into the equation. So I have the equation y equals to x squared plus ax plus b. And I have my coordinate 0 minus 5. This is a coordinate on the curve. So this is the x value, this is the y value. I will substitute these two into this equation. So minus 5 is equal to 0 squared plus a multiplied by 0 plus b. 0 squared plus a times 0 is also 0. Cancel out. So you're left with minus 5 equals to b. You have now worked out the value for b. I will write down the equation again. y equals to x squared plus ax plus b. I will now substitute the other coordinate in, which is 5, 0. Again, this is your x value and this is your y value. Plug them in. So 0 is equal to 5 squared plus 5 multiplied by a plus b. I get 0 is equal to 25 plus 5a plus b. Can't go any further from there, but then I realise that b is the same thing as minus 5. I've just worked out the value of b is minus 5, so I'll substitute minus 5 into here. So 0 is equal to 25 plus 5a minus 5. 25 minus 5 give me 0 is equal to 20 plus 5a okay i want to work out the value of a so i'll subtract 20 on both sides minus 20 is equal to 5a divided by 5 on both sides minus 4 is equal to a so the value of a is minus 4 and the value of b is minus 5 in the equation of y is equal to x squared plus a x plus b i'm going to replace a with minus 4 and b with minus 5 so i'm going to be left with y is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 and there we go i have got my quadratic equation okay now that i have my quadratic equation i am going to complete the square in order to work out the turning point okay now completing the square formula if you don't know the formula is x plus b over 2 squared minus b over 2 squared plus c okay so this is the formula um if you already know how to complete the square just complete the square so I'm going to have y is equal to x minus 2 squared. Again, there's your formula. Uh, minus b over 2 is minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2 squared. And then minus b over 2 is minus, again, 2 squared, because b is minus 4 in this equation. Okay, uh, minus 5. y is equal to x minus 2 squared minus 4 minus 5. y is equal to x minus 2 minus 9. Okay, I've completed the square. To work out the turning point, it's the opposite of what's inside the bracket and the one outside stays the same. So my coordinate for my turning point, the opposite of minus 2 is 2 and the one that's outside stays the same is going to be minus 9. So the turning point coordinate is 2 minus 9. Oh, 2 minus 9. This coordinate right here is 2 minus 9. Okay. So in an exam, how do I approach this question? You've been given the equation, you've been given two coordinates, substituting the coordinates now. When I first attempted this question, I first inputted this coordinate. Now, when I inputted this coordinate first, I realised I couldn't go anywhere further than this equation. So then I inputted this coordinate. When I did this one, I realised I got B. When I got B, I could substitute it into here and continue working it out. So there's no right or wrong way to approach it. If you approach it the, 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 the wrong coordinate first, it's fine. Go back and try the other one. There's no correct answer as long as you get the same answer in the end. Okay, complete the square to get your turning point. Alrighty, guys, let's move on. This is translating graphs. The graph of y equals to fx is shown on the grid below. On the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals to fx minus 2. Okay? Now, fx minus 2, it, you should know your rules of translating graphs. This means it moves 2 to the right. If it's minus 2 inside the brackets or minus a number inside the brackets, it moves 2 to the right. Or it moves to the right. Okay? If it was plus 2, it would be moving to the left. So this coordinate is going to move two places. It is now going to be here. This coordinate is going to move two places. It's going to be here. This one is going to move two places. It's now going to be here. I'm going to use these main dots and using a pencil, I am going to draw my curve. You know, a more accurate curve if I could. Okay. All right. 
Now let's move on. On the grid, graph A has been reflected to give graph B. The equation of graph A is y equals to gx. Write down the equation of graph B. Now, the graph A is being reflected in the y-axis. So that's your main thing. You need to know the rules of what happens to your equation when it's reflected. If it was reflected in the x-axis, what would the equation look like? If it was reflected in the y-axis, what would it look like? Now, if it is reflected in the y-axis, the x will become negative and your graph of your new graph, your reflected graph, is going to be y is equal to g bracket minus x. Okay? So, if your graph is reflected in the y-axis, your x will become negative. Okay? Let's move on. Functions. For all the values of x, show that gfx equals to 2x bracket x minus 2. Okay, so you've got an fx equation and you've got your gx equation. First, I'm going to do gfx. Okay. Now, gfx means you're getting your f equation and you're plugging it into your g equation. So you're getting this equation and you're putting it into the x value in that equation. So I'm going to say 2 bracket and instead of saying the x, I'm going to say x plus 1 squared and then i've got the minus one inside that bracket before it closes i'm going to start expanding this bracket and working it out so two bracket x plus one is repeated because it's squared then a minus one i'm going to expand my brackets so i'm going to get x squared plus x plus x plus one and then minus one close my brackets don't forget the minus one in the outside of the inside bracket um, simplify the inside bracket, so x squared plus 2x plus 1, uh, close the bracket, minus 1. I can now simplify it. When I open the bracket, the plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel out. So inside my bracket, I've got x squared plus 2x left. Now, there's two things here. It, I need to prove that there's 2x on the outside, so I can factorise it by another x, or I can expand it. If I expand it, I'm left with 2x squared plus 4x. Either way, I will now factorise it by 2x. So if I factorise it with 2x on the inside, 2x squared divided by 2x is going to be x. 4x divided by 2x is going to be 2. I'm going to have 2x plus 2. Therefore, I proved that right there. Okay? The next one says find g minus 1, 7. First and foremost, let's write our g equation. gx equals to 2 bracket x minus 1. Okay? Now I'm going to do the inverse operation so that there are three steps. The first step one is make it equal to y. So y equals to 2 bracket x minus 1. Expand your bracket so y equals to 2x minus 2. That's your first step. Second step is make x the subject. So y plus 2 equals to 2x. y plus 2 divided by 2 is equal to x. Last step is replace the y with x. So g minus 1, x equals to x plus 2 divided by 2. Okay. Now, the question says we'll work out g minus 1, 7. So again, because they replaced the x value with 7, you're just going to replace your x value with 7 as well. So g minus 1, 7 equals to 7 plus 2 divided by 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 divided by 2 equals to 4.5. So the value of g minus 1, 7 is equal to 4.5. Okay? It's pretty straightforward stuff. Three steps again. Make it equal to y. Make x a subject. Replace y with x. Okay? Very straightforward stuff.